Hi, welcome to Imperva. I'm Jim Bertoft. I'm a security engineer here at Imperva, and today we're going to be talking about the Imperva data masking tool, previously known as Camouflage. If you're interested in why you should be masking your data or how the Imperva data masking tool works as an overview or how the discovery process works, you want to be looking at one of our other videos. Today we're going to be talking specifically about the masking process with the masking tool. The Imperva Camouflage Masking Tool is a Java process that can run either on a Windows or a Linux machine that has access to the staging database, because remember you want to make a copy of the database, you don't want to run the masking tool against production. And it can be scaled up or it can be scaled out. So you can install this on a bigger machine and run it with more memory um, and more uh, threads, or you can scale it across multiple machines depending on what your masking window is. Your masking window is how long you have to complete the masking job versus how big the data is and the number of masking targets. So the more masking targets, the longer it takes, but you can add resources to uh, reduce that time. At this point in the process, you will have already done the data discovery, so you know where your sensitive data is, and you've done that either by doing a sensitive data scan in SecureSphere or by using the data discovery tool in the camouflage suite. You'll use that to create a project file, which I just happen to have here. And you can see there's a couple different sections here, but we'll be focusing on the database connection the masking targets, and then running the masking job itself. We'll run it from within inside of the GUI here, but most of the time you'll be running it as a batch job. In a minute, we're going to open the database connection and take a look at the sample database. Imperva data masking supports a number of different databases as well as flat files. And the nice thing about the flat files is they're kind of the universal connector. If there is a database that for some reason we don't support or a database that you don't have direct access to maybe something from a SaaS provider like Salesforce. You can always export the data to export the data to a flat file, mask it, and then re-import it back into say a test instance. Or if you have a flat file that you need to test the importing of it into the database, then you can make sure that you mask the database and mask the flat file in the same way so that when you get to the QA test and you do that import test, that file has a record that it's able to import into. So we have our database connection set up in the project file, and you can see that it just has our uh, server location, password, etc. But you should notice the browse database button. That lets us go in and actually uh, see the database, explore it a little bit if we have questions, if we want to see the values, say, before and after a mask. We can do that using this tool, and it'll also be useful for our demonstration today. You can see we have employee numbers, first name, last names, full names, etc. in this sample database. Interesting section here is the masking targets. That's where we have a list of the sensitive fields that we brought over from the previous step. You can see in our example we've got employee last name, home phone number, etc. In each of these sections we decide which uh, transformer we want to use to perform that masking. In the case of last names, we're using the hash defined set. That means that we use a hash, which is a mathematical one-way operation that gives us a, a number or a fingerprint, if you would, of that original value. We can then use that to look it up in a defined set or a list of last names. And then that determines what we're going to use as the mask value for that last name. The nice thing about this, is every time we see that last name uh, reoccur, we're going to get the same value. So that's one of the things that helps give us that consistency uh, across different tables is making sure that we see that same value each time. And you can also change the defined set. For instance, you may have, uh, if you're masking first names, you're gonna have very different uh, set of first names from data in say Pennsylvania than you would in from data in Mumbai. As you can see, we've got a few different options over here on the side. We've got the uh, ability to input related fields. We can add a filter. So for instance, if we wanted to assign female first names to females and male first names to males, we could run a filter by the gender that appears in another field 
and use that to determine which list of names we're going to pick from the defined set that we're going to use and then pre pre process scripts and post process scripts if there's something that we want to do to maybe um, change the data after it's in there or format it in a particular way. Each of our transforms also have different options that we can use, whether it is how many of the items we want to mask, do we want to remove blanks, if this were the credit card generator, do we want to generate particular types of cards, uh, Visa, MasterCard, etc. If it's a date, do we want to change it only by a certain range? Do we want to make sure that we don't have a 64-year-old uh, get turned into a 19-year-old? Now you also see we have the ability to do flat file configurations, project security, uh, some subnetting, etc. But we're not going to be covering that today. We're going to be talking about running the masking from within inside of here. So what we're going to do is we're going to mask just one of the fields. So you can see over here on the right, I have it set to only run the employee last name field. We can start that process. It warns us, make sure you're not running against this production because it's going to go in and change the data. Goes through a little preparatory process, actually does the masking, and then comes back and tells me it's finished. We can verify this by going back to our database tool, and you can see if I rerun this, our last names are Muzzy, Polster, and Kilber. Now they are Raven, Durian, and Bloom. But there's a problem. We still have the original records here in the first name field. So you can see even though I masked the last name field, that last name information still appears under the full name. We can fix that by using masking the full name field as well. And we do that using the combo transformer. So what the combo does is it gives us a third value based on the input of one or two other values. So in this case, we're going to use the combo field. We're going to use the first name and the last name, put them together for the full name field. So if I come back and run the last name and the full name. We can see there's our warning again. Go through the preparatory steps, make sure we mask the last name first because they're dependent. And now we come back. We can update our table again. And now you can see that we have the last name mask again. And it's different this time because we started with a different original value, but the full name is also updated. As we mentioned before, you may want to run this masking project interactively while you're testing and making sure that you have the parameters set correctly, but eventually you'll just run this as a scheduled job. And we do have the ability to generate reports and tell us uh, what has happened historically. So for instance, before, after project configuration, impacted objects, historical run report tells us when we ran the masking last, what the status was, etc. And that was the Imperva data masking tool. If you have any questions, you can go to docs.imperva.com or you can ask them here at the Imperva community. Thanks for your time.